Hey guys, this is the Jaeger task guide for broadcast part five. For this task, you do have to locate and eliminate the cultist priest. And then we have to locate the ritual spot on the Chekhanaya street of Streets of Tarkov. And then we have to stash a cultist knife at the ritual spot. And then we will have to survive an extract from a raid. And I will show you guys how to complete this task fully and then give some advice on how to deal with the cultist priest afterwards, just in case you have already gotten the priest and are just here to figure out what to do now for the second half of the task. So this task will require you to have the check 13 mark key or the mysterious room mark key. And this key can be found in the pockets and bags of scabs as well as in jackets or in drawers. Or if you cannot find it in a raid, then you can always buy it from the flea market, usually for around 1.3 million rubles. So here's the map of streets and where we have to plant this knife is going to be in the marked room, which is located in the area next to the vet clinic. So my PMC is here on streets and this is the check 15 building and then the big spread grocery store is right over here. And if we do turn around and then head down the street into this expansion area, which was added during patch 13.5, then the vet clinic is going to be here on our left. Now, if we do go through these fences and then pass the vet clinic, then we are going to end up going past this playground and then you are going to see a hole in the wall in front of us. Now you are going to want to go into this hole and then you want to open up this door and then take a left. Then you are going to enter into the second room on your left where you will see another hole to the far right corner past the bed. You are going to crouch through this and then head down these stairs and then you are going to take a left. Once you are around this corner, then you are going to come to a locked door that you can unlock with the check 13 mark key. Once you open up this door, then you will see the ritual statue in the center of the room. And as you approach this, as long as you do have the cultist knife in your PMC's inventory, then you will get a prompt to plant it. And this will be a 40 second plant. And just some advice for you guys is to place the knife in your secure container, not in your actual melee slot, because if you do happen to die while going to plant this with the item in your melee slot, then you will lose the knife. And it can also be looted from your body by other PMCs as well, which is different from other melee weapons in the game. Whereas if you put it in your secure container and then it will be safe and then you can reuse it and then you won't have to buy another one if you die. Now, after you have successfully planted the knife, then you will have to survive an extract from the raid. But if you do happen to die in between planting the knife and extracting, then you will just have to come back to streets to survive an extract from a different raid. Now, as for the first part of this task, which is to locate and eliminate the priest, then that is honestly what majority of the player base will only ever see, since I ended up being level 58 last wipe and had never actually run into the priest once the entire time, until I specifically started trying to hunt them. Now, part of the reason for this is that the cultists do have a very low chance to spawn that will fluctuate a little bit throughout the wipe, but typically it is less than 10% on every map, with factory being a measly 2% chance. And this low spawn rate is obviously only at nighttime raids between the hours of 22 and 07. And just so that you guys know, if you are in a raid and the time passes 07, then they will actually despawn from the current raid, even if you are actively fighting them, which did happen to me last wipe, which is how I figured that out. However, if you have killed the priest or any of the sectants, then those bodies will actually stay in the raid for you to loot after 07. Now, in terms of completing the first part of this task, you do have to eliminate the priest, and sometimes the cultists won't actually aggro on you immediately if you're around them. They will just try to lay prone and actually hide away from you until you engage them by getting too close, shooting them, or by throwing a grenade or flashbang by them. So if they are just trying to hide and be passive, then the best strategy is to try and see if you can locate the actual priest and then take him out first, since the rest of them honestly don't matter for this task. And if you are able to do that after taking out the priest, then you will get a subtask complete for broadcast part five. And then you can just buy the cultist knife off the flea market for the next part of this task, which is to plant one of the knives on streets of Tarkov. So that means that you don't actually have to survive an extract or pick up any items from the priest to turn in. So you can just disengage and go and extract from the raid if you want to. But because the loot on the cultist is typically so good, I do recommend full sending so that you are able to try and take out the remaining sectants in order to get their loot. Because once you do take out the priest, you honestly have nothing to lose anyway. And if you do end up dying, as long as your loot is insured, then you're more than likely going to get it back since the cultists will guard it for you. And another benefit of trying to full send it is that by trying to take out the sectants, you can also work towards another task that's given by Skier called Night Sweep, where you do have to turn in 12 of the cultist knights found in raid. So that's the other reason why I would recommend trying to take on the remaining sectants after taking out the priest so that you can start saving up and working towards this optional task. So if you are lucky enough to actually find the cultists in a raid, then usually they will try to ambush you and then attempt to stab you with their knife, which will infect you with the unknown toxin. And this will start to take at your health pretty rapidly. And even if you do end up popping a propital and then also healing on top of that, usually it won't be able to keep up. Basically, you are going to need to pop an antidote, which the treatment for this at the moment is the XTG12 or the Perfotorin stimulants, both of which actually remove the unknown toxin debuff. Augmentin used to be used for this as well, but currently it does not seem to remove the debuff, even though it is classified as an antibiotic pill, but that may end up being altered in the future. Or your other option, which is not going to be a fix, but rather a temporary band-aid to give you some time to make your way to extract and potentially get out of the raid alive, is to pop a green ETG stimulant, which will actually outheal the toxin for the short lifespan of the stim. And by doing this, it will allow you to make some headway in making your way towards the extract to potentially get out of that raid and then save your kit. But if you are too far away from the extract and you're not actually going to make it out, 
And if your kit is insured, then I just recommend dropping your loot in a bush somewhere before you end up dying. So the cultists do have four maps that they can spawn on, being Customs, Wood, Shoreline, and Factory. And on Customs, they can spawn all around or inside of the Fortress area, but they can also be pulled all the way over by Crack House and the Mechanic Shop. Or on the opposite side, then they can be pulled all the way over towards the old gas station as well, depending upon if they do get into an engagement with a player. And usually on Customs, you will have the highest spawn chance for cultists among all of the maps throughout the wipe, usually starting between 5 and 8% spawn rate, and then it will gradually increase between 10 and 15%. Now at the time of me making this video, then Customs will be sitting at a 10% spawn rate. Now onto Shoreline, the cultists do have two potential spawns listed on the wiki, being at the top of the swamp area as well as at the spine by the power substation. However, some people have noted that they have still been seeing the cultists spawning at an old spawn being up at the resort, which will include in or around the ground floor of the West Wing, and even potentially over as far as the first floor of the East Wing. So just be aware of that being a possibility, even though it's not listed on the wiki. And on Shoreline, they will have a 5% spawn rate at the beginning of wipes, and then they will usually increase it similarly to Customs and Woods, but at the time of me making this video, then it will also be at a 10% spawn chance. And then moving on to Woods, the cultists will have two spawns that are located at the two cultist circle locations, which are at the northern abandoned village area and also by the cultist circle in between the checkpoint area and also the sawmill part of the map. Now on Woods, they will usually start a wipe having a 5% spawn chance there, and it will gradually increase at the same rate as Shoreline, and as mentioned, they are slightly less than Customs, but at the moment that I'm making this video, it is actually the same as Customs, so all three of these maps are at a 10% spawn rate. And then moving on to factory, so because of the size of this map, then you should anticipate running into the cultist basically anywhere on the map if you do go into a nighttime raid. But as mentioned earlier, they do have a very low spawn chance at only 2%, and usually it will stay there for majority of the wipe, but I have actually seen it up to 10% in the past. But at the time of me making this video, it is still going to be stuck at the 2% spawn rate. And although I did give you guys the usual spawn rates, just know that they can fluctuate outside the normal parameters throughout the wipe, especially during an event, and I have actually seen them increase it all the way up to a 100% spawn rate. But the everyday normal spawn rates on all the maps are generally pretty rare, especially on Factory, they're basically non-existent, except for some of you that end up having that god tier RNG. Now actually fighting the cultists is incredibly difficult and arguably one of the hardest things to do in Tarkov, especially since with the low spawn rate then you do have to really make use of any opportunity that you end up getting to run into them. You are essentially going to want to run some of your big boy or meta guns as well as bullets since cultists do have a bigger health pool than scavs, having a total of 850 health points which include 50 to the head and 220 to the thorax. And on top of that sectants usually wear reduts or defender armor and they can actually be wearing hex grids and slicks, so it can definitely feel like you're shooting rubber bullets sometimes when you are fighting these guys. However, if you are getting shot by the cultists, it's definitely not going to feel like rubber bullets because they basically only run the meta ammo in any gun that they're currently using. And I do have a picture on the screen now that shows the possible guns that they can use as well as the ammo beside it. And as you can see, it's basically BT, SPP, SNB, M62, quite a few guns that have BP and then also the 545 BP. And there are also a few guns that will use Quake Maker as well. Now another important thing to note is that the cultists usually make absolutely zero noise which does include no footstep audio as well as no voice lines from any grenades that you throw around them like the other AI does, as well as no sounds when you do shoot them. And the reason why I say usually is because at the moment of me making this guide then there is currently snow on all the maps, and when they did implement the snow then it did actually make it so that you can hear the cultist footsteps. Now the only issue with me making a guide right now is that I can currently hear the footsteps of the cultists, but once the snow is gone then we don't actually know whether or not it will revert them back to having their slippers on and being completely silent footsteps again or not. But I just wanted to make sure to mention that the current change with the snow does make them actually have sound, but there is always the potential for them to become silent again. And then another challenge when dealing with the cultists is that they're also cold blooded so they really don't show up properly on the thermal optics or at least they don't show up how you're used to seeing the enemies on those scopes so that also blocks you from being able to abuse the nighttime thermal strategy. And then on top of all this then the cultists do have completely broken AI to the point that they will track you through mountains, bushes, trees and also hard cover. And that obviously makes it very challenging to even attempt to slowly peek them and figure out where they are laying prone in a bush because as soon as you do show a single pixel of your body out and around cover, then they will start basically taking off any limb that shows. So that obviously makes it very challenging to fight them from a distance, so even if you do want to not fight them from a distance and then you start pushing towards them, because the ammo that they use is pretty much always going to be top tier, then they will typically catch you out in the open trying to cross over to a different spot, and then they will pepper you with this good ammo that they have, and then they'll either kill you, or they're going to end up limbing you and then totally destroying your armor as you approach them. 
So you definitely want to make sure that you are pre-meted any time that you do plan to run in the open area around the cultists, because if they do happen to limb you and then fracture or black your leg and then catch you limping out in the open, then you're absolutely going to be deleted very quickly. Now, in terms of what map that I do recommend or prefer to fight the cultists on, I tend to lean towards the shoreline map, preferably at the spine area spawn. And this is due to being able to use the actual spine for cover, as well as having a large area to maneuver and rotate if need be. Now it is a little bit more challenging if they do spawn up at the swamp, but you can still use the hills for some cover as well as also maneuvering around with wide flanks there too if need be. Now I also don't mind fighting them on custom since you do have a lot of cover that you can actually utilize inside the fortress. And one of the benefits here is that you can actually get yourself into a room with only one entryway since you honestly can't hear the bastards, then this way then you don't have to constantly check your flank. But the biggest issue on customs that I find is that fortress is such a massive hotspot and you will likely be interrupted or third party while fighting them here. So that makes an already difficult fight even more challenging and aggravating. So usually I choose to go shoreline over customs for this sole reason. Now as for woods, I typically just avoid trying to fight them on this map since the area by checkpoint is right by the sawmill and nighttime woods is littered with thermal users and there is not much cover in this area. And even up at the abandoned village, there isn't much cover whatsoever. So because I haven't really figured out a good or safe way to fight them on woods, I can't exactly recommend you guys go there at this time. And as for factor, I just don't even bother trying there because of the 2% spawn rate. And with my luck, I would honestly be better off trying to win the lottery than getting a cult to spawn on factory. So hopefully you guys found this guide useful and it does help you to complete this task. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video. And if you're still here at the end, I definitely appreciate you. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is just a couple of my different social links in case you guys wanted to connect more easily. I am primarily streaming on Twitch now multiple nights a week. So if you do want to connect with me or my community, that would probably be the easiest way to do so. And if you do come over to the Twitch and you want to join the Discord community, then just type exclamation point Discord or cord in the chat in order to get an invite link. And if you don't use Twitch, then I do have a link in the picture as well as a link below in the description. And we are growing and currently have an active and welcoming community with people of all experience and skill levels. So there will always be someone who could help to answer any questions that you may have. As always, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.